I'm Richard Dunkerley, I'm co-director of Alternatives and I'm speaking today with Jan Day. Jan is uh, a teacher around relationships and tantra, intimacy, and she's going to be leading a workshop for Alternatives on Sunday the 5th of July. Uh, Jan, it's nice to be speaking to you today. Thank you, lovely to speak to you too. Um, I noticed from your website you have an incredible range of, of workshops going on. Um, how, how did you get into this whole field of relationships and tantra? I got into it through my own journey, actually. Um, I was happily working as a research chemist in my 20s and realizing that for myself, my own sexual life, my own um, relationship with my, my body, myself as a woman, my ability to relate with men um, from, as a woman to man was um, in a huge mess, actually, not to put it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> too finely. Um, and I needed to do a lot of my own work. It was something I just got very frightened about um, through no big particular thing, actually. It was just the background and the cultural background that I came from. I'd come to the very wrong conclusion early on in my life that, that sexuality was something disgusting and horrible. And so, um, of course, that messed up just about everything. So I did all, started doing all my own work. And I worked with Osho for many years and I worked with many other teachers and it was really a journey of healing my sexuality and coming into a place where I could delight in and love myself as, a, as a, a woman, as a sexual being, and feel um, just the delight and the joy that comes from owning that. Mm -hmm. And it was never my intention to teach it. Uh, it. It was just a journey that I went on and that, that, that took me on its way and, and healed me and then eventually went into relationships and learning about relationships. And there came a point, um, it was about, I believe it was about 1999, where the, the doors just started open. People were saying, why, why aren't you teaching? Why aren't you doing this? Mm -hmm. um, why aren't you giving back? And it became, some opportunities arose, and I just realized what joy there was also in teaching, and that mm -hmm. actually I could. It was never my intention to do that, but it unfolded in that way, and I'm very grateful for it. Uh-huh, great. Uh, I, I guess the, the very title of the workshop, Conscious Relationships, uh, it rather suggests that many of us um, are maybe unconscious in relationship, and I, I know that's um, certainly the case for me. Um, I, wh wh why is that, do you think? How, how do we, you know, why do we become unconscious in relationships? Um, I think it's, it's for many reasons, but a, a lot is just the background and the, the difficulties that we've had growing up. And that uh -huh. we tend, to, I think all human beings tend to want to, to stick with the familiar and stick with what they know and get into patterns. And the patterns that we usually developed um, as young children in our relationships were all about survival. They were about being safe and mm -hmm. They weren't usually about being terribly conscious because that wasn't our top priority. Our top priority was, of course, feeling safe and surviving mm -hmm. and fitting in and being loved. Yeah. And so then we tend to try and carry on those rather outdated ways of surviving in our relationships. And they're very much about me and how do I get what I want and how do I get my needs met. Mm -hmm. got two people trying to do, it's all about me and how do I get my needs met. There's not very much we there's not much space for a we in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a part of conscious relationships is us knowing ourselves and making friends with ourselves and knowing who we are. And when we know who we are and we can make friends with and befriend some of the darker aspects of ourselves, that gives us a space to be able to see the other and to understand the viewpoint of the other. And that leads us into the possibility to, for me to show you who I am and then be able to step into your shoes and see who you are, and for you to be able to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be doing that not only on the level of our emotionality and our feelings and our thoughts, but also on our physical body and how we feel in our physical body in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. and what that enables us to do once we can begin to stay comfortable with all that is that we can step into a we space where we're looking after our relationship and not only trying to meet the needs of me and I and what I need and want mm -hmm. in the old patterns. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a wonderful vision. Um, I, I guess in it, what happens in everyday life, really, it's, it's sometimes quite difficult to have those ideals, isn't it? And um, maybe especially under stressful situations and, yeah. uh, you know, we're just not really present, maybe to the other person. 
Um, but yes, it's, it sounds a wonderful ideal. Um, so, what, what might, uh, what sort of exercises and things might you be doing on on the, at, at the workshop on the fifth of July? But it'll be a whole mixture. It'll be some things that bring us into connection with ourselves, um, so that we can feel ourselves and show ourselves. Because we need to be able to do that, and we need to be able to see other people and stay present with that. So we'll do some exercises that enable that to happen. So there'll be emotional connection, uh, emotional transparency. There'll be some, some exercises where we um, also probably involve touch and within the boundaries that people have, which always means nobody ever has to be touched or touched. Um, but that enables people to come very much into what's touched in our physical body. Even if our hands are touched, what, what do we feel there and can, what happens if we open to that and, and can we say yes and no in the face of that? Um, yes and no are just really important words that most of us haven't ever really learned how to use properly. I mean, they're probably the first words we ever speak and yet, you know, I, I've never yet been into a room of people where I say, you know, in all the times when you say yes when you mean no and probably the times when you say no when you mean yes and, you know, the whole room puts their hands up. And, and usually the ones who don't aren't aware of the types they play. Uh -huh. So, yeah. you know, we just aren't culturally um, enabled and taught how to stand in our own feelings and, mm -hmm. and make space for them and express what's simply true for us mm -hmm. and, and allow ourselves to be in any discomfort that arises when we say no or mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. in the, the right moment. So we'll definitely do some work with that. Mm -hmm. We'll probably also do some work with... Um, a listening exercise where we really step into the other person's shoes and practice understanding them, especially in situations where we might not necessarily agree, and so that we can begin to uh, to practice having this wonderful experience of seeing the world through their eyes, even though we don't actually agree with what it is, but we can understand it and we can vibrate with them, and that gives us a basis for... Um, for being able to be in a real we space and the beginning of a conscious relationship so mm -hmm. that we, we have a possibility to share and see each other's point of view. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yes, I, I guess we're all looking for deeper connection uh, with each other, aren't we? In an authentic connection. And yeah. uh, maybe it's, it's nice to have a, a sort of space and a time to do that. Yeah. Um, it is, and I think at the beginning we need to put time aside for... Uh, and really making that the fullness of our focus. And then the more we practice in different situations, the more possible it is that that becomes an, an integrated part of our life and we, we simply slip into that. It, just, it is a practice that then becomes part of our everyday life, mm -hmm. which, of course, is the point. There'd be no point yes, in practicing yeah. and practicing and living. Um, and and the, the workshop is uh, it's open to everyone, isn't it? It's uh, open to singles as, as well as people who are in a couple. Yes, absolutely, yeah. and often, oftentimes one half of a couple will come, you know, somebody will come and their partner can't come, and that's totally fine too. All, all of the work we do will set up situations where people can either work with their partner, or they can work with different partners, different single people, or they can work with somebody else, even though they've got a partner at home, and, and everything will be totally with respecting the boundaries that they have, so mm -hmm. nobody needs to worry about having to do anything that they don't want to do, because... Mm -hmm. The very point of it is to be able to say no to what you don't want to do. So yes. we're going to be very honest and authentic and, and make space for whatever uncomfortable things happen if we say, no, actually, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Great. It's, I, I guess it's a very English thing, isn't it, being, being polite and, and not really saying, you know, not wanting to offend people almost. But uh, you know, so I, I find it myself quite difficult to say no you know, in relationships. Yeah. So. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a really important thing to learn, and it, and it opens the doorway to really honest communication yes. and feeling, feeling safer, actually, when we can just show ourselves and say what's true. And when we learn to receive a no as a piece of information and as a gift, and, and the way I can frame it, and we'll, we'll go into this in more depth, obviously, in the workshop, is if I know that you can say no when you mean no, it means that I can trust your yes, uh -huh. which means that we can look, we can... Learn to think of, okay, if somebody's saying no, hooray, that means they're trustworthy. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Which is a very different way of looking at it. Oh, no, they're going to reject me. <laughs> it makes it very difficult to say no to somebody if they're not actually welcoming your no when it's, when it's there. Great. 
Okay, Jan. Well, I, I think that's uh, I think that's uh, good for now. And um, so that, that's uh, Jan Day's workshop on on the fifth of July. Um, and you can book via our website, alternatives.org.uk. And um, Jan's website is janday.com. And she has a whole range of uh, other things going on there, so uh, do check that out. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Jan, for talking to me today, and uh, we look forward to the workshop. Yes, yeah, see you in July. Great, thanks. Thank, thank you. Oh, okay, <laughs> thanks, Jan. <laughs> Great. Um, I, by the way, I've, I've just uh, seen Malcolm Stern, so I, I, I know you uh, worked quite yeah. closely with him, so... Yeah. yeah. Have you been working together for quite some time? Or? This will be the third year we've run a workshop together, and... Um, it's, I mean, it's a really a lot of fun. We get on very well together and yeah. we work together. And just having had, you know, the first year, I think it worked well and it was hard. You know, we had to really both concentrate uh -huh. to, because we're used to working on our own. But the second, last year, it was much easier and it was really fun. So, yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah I scout, a lot of our students cross pollinate and people come uh -huh. to me him and him to me. All right. Uh, so I think, you know, there's something in both of our work that people enjoy, so it yes. works really well. Yeah, mm -hmm. great. Okay, well, fantastic. Well, thank you. And I, I understand you've got a very busy day today. You've seen a lot of coaching uh, clients. So, yeah. Jam-packed with coaching from beginning to end, and then I'm off on a training seminar tomorrow. So, uh -huh. oh, wow. yeah, thanks for fitting in with my timing. That was great. Yeah, great. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well, thanks very much, Jan, and um, yeah, we, yeah we, we, let's see how, how the workshop bookings go, and we look forward to July. Great, thanks, right. Richard. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bye. Bye now. Bye.